shaky hands, confusion, feeling weak, and really hungry. Do you get those feelings too? I get them a couple times a week. They almost always come when my blood sugar is a bit too low. And I learned to recognize these signs quite quickly. I also learned that when I eat a few glucose tabs or drink orange juice, those feelings are gone very soon. But do you know that you might not always feel it when your blood sugar gets too low and that you might be in danger? Let's talk about it. Financial support for this video was provided by Vertex Pharmaceuticals Incorporated. It happened to me just the other day. I woke up and I felt just fine. But when I checked my blood sugar, it was 52. That's really low. That's a moderate hypoglycemia by definition. And it's very close to severe low blood glucose event. And I had no idea that my blood sugar was that low until I saw that number on the blood glucose meter screen. You see the symptoms of low blood sugar that most of us get, like the shaky hands, like the confusion, are warning signs that something is not right. It's like when you're at the beach and the lifeguard puts up the red flag. The red flag is also a warning sign. It simply means that there are serious hazards in the water, dangerous currents or even sharks. Will you go in the water when you see those red flags? Probably not. You might not enjoy your beach day as much, but at least you'll avoid a trip to the hospital if you stay out of the water. I got a bit scared that morning and I started asking myself, why didn't I get those warning signs? Why didn't I see the red flag? Why didn't I feel my low blood sugar coming this time? And a lot of things were going through my head. Am I at risk? Can something more serious happen to me next time when my blood glucose drops too low and I don't know about it? Can this be life-threatening? I needed to know, so I started researching. And what I found out really struck me. You see, we hear a lot of people on YouTube talking about high blood sugar and how dangerous it is. Almost no one mentions low blood sugar being dangerous. But I found out that severely low blood sugar can be just as dangerous as high blood sugar, if not more. In fact, there are millions of people with diabetes who don't get these warning signs, like shaky hands, feeling weak, or feeling hungry. And that's exactly why they are in extreme danger every day, every hour and every minute. It's a different kind of danger than the one caused by high blood sugar. Low blood sugar is not only slowly damaging your body. The damage caused by low blood sugar is more immediate and it is life-threatening. The people I'm talking about suffer from impaired hypoglycemia awareness and they don't feel it when their blood sugar gets too low. In fact, about 1 in 5 type 1 diabetics and 1 in 10 type 2 diabetics treated with insulin have experienced hypoglycemia and awareness. It's a serious problem because when you get Get hit by a severe hypoglycemia, you need help very quickly. And if it doesn't come fast enough, it can be fatal. And this is no exaggeration. Severe hypoglycemia accounts for 10% of deaths in between young people living with type 1 diabetes. Now going back to our beach example. When you have impaired hypoglycemia awareness and you don't feel the signs of low blood sugar, it basically means that you go swimming at an isolated beach with no warning signs. There is no lifeguard and you won't know if sharks are in the water until you get attacked by one. And people with impaired hypoglycemia awareness hang out at that beach 24-7. Every day, every hour and every minute. And I just found myself hanging out at that beach too. That morning when I was 52 and didn't know about it. Now, I don't want to scare you too much, but if you have type 1 or type 2 diabetes treated with insulin, you can develop hypoglycemia and awareness over time. Not every person with diabetes experiences this condition, but we are at risk, some of us more than others. So let's look at some key factors that researchers identified as the biggest contributors to hypoglycemia and awareness. And right after that, I will share with you a few tips and hacks that I found that can help you protect yourself. Risk factor number five are certain medications. If you take other medications besides insulin, this can affect your ability to recognize low blood glucose events. Some medications used to treat high blood pressure and depression may cause this. So if you take these medications, be aware that you might experience impaired hypoglycemia awareness and talk about it with your medical team. Moving on to risk Risk factor number four for impaired hypoglycemia awareness. Studies have shown that when you have low blood glucose very often, you might stop experiencing symptoms when your blood sugar drops too low. So risk factor number four, frequent low blood sugar events. This is definitely something I need to pay more attention to and you should 
two. If you have frequent lows, talk to your medical team about strategies how to avoid it. Risk factor number three is how long you have had diabetes. Obviously, we have very little control over when we get diagnosed, especially with type one diabetes. But we should keep this in mind, especially in relation to the previous point. Because the longer you have diabetes, the more low blood glucose events you probably experienced. Risk number two for impaired hypoglycemia awareness is age. Some studies have shown that older people are less likely to feel hypoglycemia symptoms early on. Also, at times seniors experience cognitive symptoms like confusion or difficulty speaking at the same time as the other symptoms like shakiness or sweating, so they might not be able to identify what's happening to them. Many people experience hypoglycemia while exercising or after consuming alcohol. Your exercise plan and consuming alcohol is always something you should talk through with your doctor. When you engage in these activities, always be careful. Don't let your blood sugar go too low too often. Try to work out strategies on how to prevent these drops. Because risk factor number one is simply doing things that cause low blood sugar. Now I know exactly what some of you are thinking. I've had diabetes for a long time and I've always felt the symptoms of low blood sugar. This cannot happen to me. And trust me, I was thinking the exact same thing too until that morning when I found myself with a blood sugar of 52 and having no idea about that having no idea it was that low. I was feeling perfectly fine. The fact that you've always experienced the symptoms early doesn't mean that you can't develop hypoglycemia and awareness. The glucose level at which we experience the symptoms can gradually start to lower. And I'm a living example of that. I always felt my symptoms when I dropped to 65 or 70, but that morning I dropped to 52 and I didn't feel anything. Unfortunately, even if you don't feel symptoms until you reach even lower levels, the level at which we might lose consciousness stays the same. And it's not that far from 52. And I had no idea how close to a severe hypoglycemia event I was at that time when I was feeling perfectly fine, having no idea that my blood sugar was 52. I only realized it was 52 when I checked my blood sugar. And since that day, I started observing myself a lot more because I was a bit worried. And I noticed an interesting trend. I always feel my low blood sugar symptoms very well when my blood glucose drops rather fast. But I don't always feel the symptoms that well when my blood glucose is dropping very slowly for an extended period of time, exactly how it was that morning. So those prolonged slow declines are something that I need to pay more attention to. Now the most important part of this video, how can we protect ourselves from this? Keep in mind I'm not a doctor and you should always consult your doctor to see what's best for you. This is by no means medical advice. But I have five tips that from my experience helped tremendously to stay away from low blood glucose levels. The more you check your blood sugar, the higher the chances you will identify a potential hypo and reduce the risk of developing low levels without warning. So my tip number five is check your blood sugar regularly, especially before, after, and even during activities like exercise, physical activity, and sleep. My next tip is related to insulin that you use. There are many types of insulin that can be used to treat diabetes, and there may be different types of insulin available to you based on where you live. So my tip number four is work closely with your healthcare professional to fine tune your insulin regimen. And while I can't provide medical advice, I'm happy to talk with you about the options that worked for me. Tip number three to reduce the time spent with low glucose levels is taking full advantage of the diabetes technology that's available to you. This is a big one. And by the way, wearing a continuous glucose monitor or an insulin pump is sexy. Hit like if you agree. I can tell you from my experience that a continuous glucose monitor has been a game changer for me. It helped me improve my blood sugar levels so much and it was the number one thing to help me prevent low blood sugar. The reason why is that the continuous glucose monitor can catch a hypoglycemia before it actually happens. It alerts me when my blood sugar crosses the 85 milligram per deciliter threshold, which for me 
is the right threshold to be alerted and to take action to prevent a hypo. And it does that even when I'm sleeping. And by the way, you can set a different threshold of when you want to be alerted that is right for you. Many modern insulin pumps work with the CGM data and adjust the amount of insulin you received throughout the day automatically. These automated systems can even suspend your insulin delivery when they see that your blood sugar starts going dangerously low. This is especially helpful when you sleep and when you're not aware of what's happening with your blood glucose levels. The pump adjusts automatically to keep your glucose stable all night long. Tip number two to reduce the time spent with low blood glucose levels. If you experience frequent lows, it is possible that your insulin dose or your carb to insulin ratios are off. Or maybe you're overestimating the amount of carbohydrates in your meals. Or maybe, just maybe, you don't make the right adjustments to your insulin dose when you exercise. There are so many things that can affect our blood glucose levels. My advice? Become a student of your blood sugar, just like me. The more you study your blood sugar trends, the better you will understand it and the more likely you will be able to prevent any low blood sugar events. If you're a newly diagnosed diabetic and you feel like you can't really manage your diabetes very well yet, we've all been there. Take your time to learn about it. Talk to your doctor and your diabetes educator about any challenges that you are experiencing and check out other videos on my channel. They might help you too. And here is tip number one. If you already have impaired hypoglycemia awareness, it might be possible to regain some of those early warning symptoms that your blood glucose is going low. According to American Diabetes Association, you might be able to do that by avoiding any hypoglycemia, even mild hypoglycemia, for several weeks. You should work with your healthcare team to figure out if this is the right approach for you to manage your impaired hypoglycemia awareness. But before you do anything, please go watch this video, where I share my story about the day I almost die because of my low blood sugar. In that video, I share a few more tips on dealing with hypoglycemia. So go check it out. I'll see you there. Ciao.